Here is the definition again of homothetic preferences. Preferences are homothetic if for all X bundles and all Y bundles such that the X bundle is weakly preferred to the Y bundle, it must be the case that if you multiply the quantity of all goods of the X bundle, you will get a bundle which is weakly preferred to a bundle where you multiply all the quantities of the Y bundle with the same constant C. So for all C greater than zero. This is the definition of homothetic preferences. However, we tend to prefer to work with representations of preferences, utility functions, instead of preferences themselves. If preferences can be represented by a utility function, then the definition of homothetic preferences can be more easily stated in terms of the utility function. We can then show that if your preferences can be represented by a utility function, which is homogeneous of degree one, well, then preferences must be homothetic. The first thing I will do is to describe what's meant by homogeneous of degree one, and then we will see exactly why these two definitions are equivalent. So let's begin by looking at the definition of homogeneous of degree one. This is a mathematical concept that we apply to a utility function which depends on two variables. The mathematical definition is the same no matter which function we look at. I think it's useful to start with a simple example. So let's say that my utility function is the square root of x1 times x2. This function will turn out to be homogeneous of degree one. To prove that this function is homogeneous of degree one, we make a replacement. We replace x1 with a constant c times x1, and we replace x2 with a constant c times x2, where c is an arbitrary constant greater than zero. We then have a utility function c times x1, c times x2, which is equal to square root, x1 goes into cx1, and x2 goes into cx2. I have c times x1 times c times x2, so this is the same thing as square root of c square, x1 times x2. c is strictly positive, so I can do square root of c square, which becomes c, and then I have x1 times x2. And this is exactly equal to c times the utility function evaluated at x1 comma x2. You can see that the utility function evaluated at cx1 and cx2 is precisely equal to c times the utility function evaluated at x1 comma x2. If that's the case for all c greater than zero, then we say that the function is homogeneous of degree one. So here is the formal definition. U is homogeneous of degree one. If the utility function evaluated at CX1 and CX2 is precisely equal to C UX1, UX2 for all C greater than zero. For example, the utility function X1 times X2 is not homogeneous of degree one. U of CX1, CX2 is CX1 times CX2, which is C squared X1, X2, and that's C squared times U of X1, X2. It needs to be C, not C squared. For this utility function, if I double both X1 and X2, utility will be quadrupled, not doubled. This function is instead an example of a function that's homogeneous of degree two. Now that we know what we mean by homogeneous of degree one, let's check that these two definitions are the same. So I start with two bundles, x1 comma x2, where x1, x2 is weakly preferred to y1, y2. I want to show that it must then be the case that cx1, cx2, is weakly preferred to CY1, CY2 
for all c greater than zero. If preferences can be represented by a utility function that's homogeneous of degree one. Well, this is pretty straightforward. If the X bundle is weakly preferred to the Y bundle, then the utility that we get from the X bundle must be greater than or equal to the utility we get from the Y bundle. The utility we get from the CX1, CX2 bundle is then equal to, due to the fact that U is homogeneous of degree one, equal to C times U of X1, X2. Similarly for the CY1, CY2, it's equal to C, U, Y1, Y2. If I multiply both sides here by C, we see that U of C, X1, C, X2 must be greater than or equal to U, C, Y1, C, Y2. But that is exactly this one. So we have proved that if the X bundle is weakly preferred to the Y bundle, then CX1, CX2 must be weakly preferred to CY1, CY2, which means that preferences are homothetic. Let me just point out one final thing. Let's say that we have preferences that can be represented by the utility function X1 times X2. Now this utility function is not homogeneous of degree one. Does that mean that these preferences are not homothetic? Well, the answer to that question is actually no. We know that if preferences can be represented by a utility function u, then any monotonic transformation of this utility function will represent exactly the same preferences. So these preferences can be represented by either this utility function or equally well by this utility function, where I'm taking the square root of my original one. Well, this one is homogeneous of degree one. And keep in mind, in the definition, it says that if it can be represented by a utility function that's homogeneous of degree one, then preferences are homothetic. It doesn't say that all utility functions representing the same preferences will be homogeneous of degree one. So I think that's important to point out. If preferences can be represented by a utility function, then they are homothetic if they can be represented by a utility function which is homogeneous of degree one. U of CX1, CX2 must be equal to C times U of X1 and X2 for all constant C greater than zero. The simplest way to visualize this is to use C equal to two. If the utility function is homogeneous of degree one, and the consumer doubles the consumption of each good, her utility will also double. 